What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is January 18th of 2022. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are and in today's video, I want to spend some time to talk about why we may be on the verge of a pretty harsh correction of over a 20 to 30% decline in Bitcoin's price. Now, if you guys have been watching the channel, you know that all the while we've been bearish in the short term over the past couple of weeks and we believe that there's still more downside to go. I'm still a long-term bull. I believe that we're still in a bull market, not a bear market. And I want to spend some time to explain why it's very likely we could see this correction, but at the same time, how it could be the catalyst to finally set ourselves up on the next uptrend and charter towards the 150K, 200K range for Bitcoin. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the conversation, guys. And first off, I want to start by just taking a look at the chart here. If you guys have been routinely watching the channel here, you know that we've been talking about the idea since we've had the correction back here in December. We've been keeping this line generally drawn here on the chart, haven't touched it. We drew back here in early December that we would eventually start to roll back over and revisit back here to the range we saw back in May, right? This was the general target range we talked about. And all the while we have it drawn out here going into February, I do really want to visualize that when the sell-off does come, it's not going to be this little happy pappy kind of slow but steady sell-off of lower highs and lower lows. I really feel we're gonna get something quite dramatic. And to be honest with you guys, as we're looking at the price here, as we did have a little bit of a rebound here in early January, they got some bulls very confident that this was the end of the sell-off, that prices were gonna start to recover those gains have quickly faded and it looks like this is not only going to be considered a dead cat bounce in price which means the price will roll over but when we roll back down here there really isn't many ranges of significant support and it's just likely at this point as we talked about from this correction here even after we recovered back here in december a little bit right that it would be likely that we repeat what we saw back in may to some degree having a correction down to this range, getting people towards what I would define as max pain. Now, what is max pain really, right? Well, there's all kinds of different terms that you could use interchangeably with the term max pain, but it basically defines the point of peak fear when everyone, even the bulls, are convinced that we're in a bear market, that prices are just gonna keep sinking down. It feels like things are gonna go to zero, right? Now, I think we can all generally agree that the sentiment right now in the market, all the while we may be invested in crypto, most people in the market are already bearish. We are already getting into the last few innings of this pullback, this mid-cycle correction. And so many people now are starting to get on the page that we're in a bear market, we're gonna go to 20K, 10K for Bitcoin, altcoins are gonna get obliterated. Well, all the while, We've been confident in the idea that this is a mid-cycle correction, repeating the same sideways long-term consolidation period as we saw back here between 2019 and 2020, setting up the stage for not only a recovery and price back to the all-time highs, but to set a new all-time highs towards November of 2022. We've been on this idea of expanding cycles, right? This idea that it's gonna take a longer time for us to get to these higher ranges, but at the same time, that we're confident it's not a bear market. Now, let's go ahead and dive into a couple things here, I guess. Now, I understand hearing the idea of a 20 to 30% correction back down to this $30,000, $35,000 range is not fun. But I wanna talk about how you can best prepare yourself and also some reasons why we believe that it is going to happen. So the first thing I wanna talk about as a reason as to why it's gonna happen is the dynamic of open interest. There is still too many people who are either going on derivatives trading platforms, opening up excessive leverage positions that are at risk for liquidation, especially during a 20, 30% decline from where we are now. And outside of that, if we take a look here, comparative to, uh, for example, the May lows here, right? Coming down to this price range, we had about $10 billion, give or take 10 to 12 billion in open interest, right? At the moment, we're sitting at 16.87 billion. So we've still got, again, although it was a, definitely at a higher price here, right? We've got more open interest in the market per price. And I think that it's very fair to see that we would get a correction that would knock out another four or $5 billion in liquidations, meaning effectively four to $5 billion positions are gonna be wiped out in the derivatives markets. Not to mention, this is not including all of the people who are going out there and taking their crypto deposits, right? Their crypto holdings, using it as collateral and borrowing stable coins or dollars to go out and speculate and buy more crypto. 
that are very much at risk for liquidation, especially those who came in and did this around the 50 to uh, 55K range, right? When we get down to this range, there's a good chance that a lot of people over leverage themselves and are gonna get liquidated, causing a cascade effect on price, which again, explains why we get these dramatic out of nowhere major sell side days, right? Like we saw back here, right? Everyone was getting all levered up. They saw that we got back to the all time highs. They went in three, five, 10 X leverage. And then just a small decline in price is enough to cause their positions to get liquidated, which means that the platforms need to sell the underlying uh, crypto in this case, their positions, causing a cascade of more liquidations. I can promise you all these exchanges, right? These platforms, love when these events happen, whether they want to admit it or not. They love liquidating you. And the content creators out there who are promoting you to use leverage trading platforms, which we don't do here on the channel. The other ones though, on the other hand, they make lots of money when you get liquidated. Kind of crazy how a content creator could go out of their way to try to put you in a position where you're likely to fail rather than just simply long-term investing or dollar cost averaging at your expense for their own benefit. If you've got YouTubers or content creators who are promoting these platforms, I go ahead and unsubscribe for them. Uh, they're not working in your better interest, rather their own. And again, if you guys are wondering about like, okay, Nick, you believe that there's this 20, 30% correction and we will continue to talk about reasons for this, uh, but also why we, we we're confident that we're in a bull market in the grand scheme of things, you might be wondering, Nick, what can I do to protect myself? The first thing is that if you're in any leverage positions, close them out. It doesn't matter if you're up or down on them, close them. Because if you're at risk of having a liquidation event, you could lose everything. And I can say that the vast majority of you who are holding leverage positions are going to be at risk. I'll say that with pretty sheer confidence, right? And it's not an insult to you guys or anyone out there. It's not to say you can't trade or anything. Leverage is a very delicate tool that can come back to haunt you and it haunts the vast majority of people who use it. It is like a casino when it comes to the volatility that we see in crypto. Now, a lot of you might be curious like Nick, okay, if you do believe this pullback is in, how could we not be in a bear market? Well, first off, we're revisiting back to the range here back in May. And again, I've pointed out this idea of the sideways consolidation before we break past the previous all, uh, relative highs here for the cycle, where we continue through and set in the next wave. This time it'll be the third wave or the third rally we'll see within the markets. And usually it's about a 345% move usually. So we're asking for, again, a roughly around the same amount, right? We've been seeing expanding ranges here for price, right? And this is, again, considering where we're at now, right? We're asking for a pretty conservative ask from the previous relative highs here, 129% rally, not that much, right? But if you take a look at most of the data science models, logarithmic growth curves, we can see here, for example, that there was a long extended period of time of sideways consolidation, right? Where we came back down to 0.3 here, which was, again, the midpoint here before the parabolic mid-cycle rally in 2013 before coming back up, showing resilience, and kicking off the next wave. We can also take a look here as well at what's going on here within the 2021-2022 timeframe, right? Looks like we're coming back down here again towards this 0.24 range. And what would you what would you guess? Look, that's right exactly where we had this kind of midpoint range here when we were at 20K in price, and then we kicked off the rally to 65K. So again, Logarithmic growth curves, especially considering the expanding cycle, um, you know, theory in this case, the idea that the cycles are getting longer, right? I think the four-year cycle is completely blown out of the water now. Again, at this point, it just doesn't even make sense, right? We can see here though that this has been again just doing the sideways consolidations in normal territory. We didn't get the over uh, inflated rally here towards the top of the logarithmic growth curves. We haven't seen that yet, which means we're likely going to see it sometime in late 2022 if we're going off of expanding cycles. But if we take a look at the CBBI, right, which uh, utilizes a variety of different metrics to gauge a market sentiment, we can see here. But right now, again, same exact situation, coming back down here towards this low, uh, this mid 40 to uh, 40 point range here on the indice, right? Right where we had, again, resistance on the indice, okay? So again, I would say that we haven't seen any serious top signal, and we're also not seeing any sign of a bear market. You see much more sharper rallies and declines here for bull market tops entering into the next phase of the bear market. So there's no real sign to be fearful right now in the market. On the other hand here, one big confidence sign that is just clear as day 
and I know I'm beating it like a dead horse at this point, is the fact that altcoins are continuing to garner dominance. Now, some of you might be saying, Nick, this is just because of new altcoins being added to the market. Well, if we take a look at the altcoin cycle or altcoin season index, right? let's take a look here. This is taking a look at the top 50 altcoins against Bitcoin. At this point, nearly 80%, specifically 78% of the top 50 altcoins have been outpacing Bitcoin. It doesn't mean that they aren't going down in their dollar term values, right? Everything is bleeding right now as Bitcoin is going down. It's a fair point, but it's important to note that the vast majority of altcoins are selling off less worse than Bitcoin. I said that's maybe not proper English. They're faring better than Bitcoin in this market, and that is not a sign of a bear market, rather of a mid-cycle correction in a bull market, plain and simple, right? We're seeing good, solid confidence here in altcoins where it's actually getting into the excited or exuberant period for altcoins. Just imagine what happens here when we get a rebound in Bitcoin, right? It showcases here that the excitement and capital rotation is going towards altcoins here. And I think that that also plays a role in the sell-off that we're seeing here within the market. The case in point here, guys, is this. Be worrisome over the next coming days. The way you can go about benefiting from this, even though we're expecting this correction is going to come, if you're even allocated to crypto, you don't have to panic. You don't have to sell your positions. What I personally would recommend, if you have fiat on side and if you feel comfortable and you've done your own due diligence that you want to add more crypto, dollar cost averaging on these kind of dips are usually great opportunities, historically speaking. It's not just me saying it. Historically speaking, during bull markets, when you get these types of corrections in price, or we come down over 50%, that's usually a good time to average in to the market. All right? All the while there might be blood in the streets, it's a great time to average in because we get discounts on the assets that we love. And that's the general gist of it, guys. Again, Going against the grain, I don't think many people are talking about this correction coming soon, but we've been pretty spot on here over the past couple of weeks as we've been talking about the further sell side correction. We need a phase of max pain. Now, if you guys are, whether you're concerned or excited about this moment and stuff, no matter what kind of emotions you guys are feeling, if you guys want some good, rational, level-headed content and analysis of this potential correction and further analysis of the market, you guys can not only subscribe to the channel, it's one of the best ways you can support the Data Dash channel, but along with that, if you can, hit that bell icon so you guys do not miss another video here on the channel and make sure you get notified of all videos coming out and all live streams that we do as well, which can always be fun to do during those hectic times. We all come together and we uh, buckle up, we get on the roller coaster and uh, we try to break down what's going on in the market. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you for letting me take some time to ramble on and tell you guys what my thoughts are on the market. But until the next video, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.